Okay, this is page number seven. I got to figure out, I'm moving around like an old man. So that's the first thing I have to stop doing is moving around like an old man. So now I think I look okay. I think the side of my face is finally lit. So now I'm going to get up and stop being like an old man and get up and grab a cap, throw it on and flip it around and play with it and look like a fool and try this now. Hi everybody, welcome back to my house and welcome downstairs to my man cave. I got a couple of questions about radios and tube testers and somebody emailed me about PA system. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the mobile page PA amp that works in buses. Very popular amp. It's probably been around 25, 30 years at least in a solid state model, 12 or 24 volt. And there are plenty of them around. On eBay, you can find them pretty reasonable prices. So uh, we'll get to that. Now, before I get to that, oh, say hello to Maggie. Here, here's my girlfriend, Maggie. Yes. She likes to be on camera too. Look at the camera, Maggie, and say hi to everybody. And now, over here, uh, I have a cap or a hat for every occasion. For instance, when I'm with my wife, I wear my Philippine cap because she came from the Philippines. At Christmas time, everybody wants to see me do my Santa Claus act. And the Vikings will be in town, so we'll do a special act for them. Now, when I'm doing my ham radio activity, I wear my ham cap. When I'm out with the boys at the dude ranch, I will be a dude. When I am with the girls at an Easter time, I will be appropriately attired. Now, last but certainly not least, behold, the bus grease monkey lurks in spirit here in the basement. So, hello, Scott and everybody. I just received my brand new grease monkey cap. So, over to the radio shop in a minute. Since I don't have anybody here to operate the camera, you'll have to bear with me while I walk off the set. Maggie here is trying to learn how to operate it, but her paws are just a little bit too big. So now I'm going to pause. Back in a minute. Okay, we'll start out by imagining that you have seen a couple of amps available on eBay or somewhere else. So let me show you the two types that are common. This one, the older model, is 12 volts. Most of your buses are 12 volts. Some of you guys have newer buses. You don't notice the power in here, and it's clearly marked. The polarity is clearly marked. You can find a two-pin Jones plug, or a plain, ordinary slide-in connectors will work here. Just the single pieces that you can buy will slide in here. This is the speaker. And this, again, is a two-pronged Jones plug. And you can create something to slide in there if it doesn't come with a speaker connection. Over here is where the microphone plugs in. And that is a four-pin XLR. A standard four-pin XLR. 
all of the PA systems in auditoriums and schools and radio stations and all sound stages take the three pin XLR. Those are all of the stage microphones. This PA system takes a four pin. The buses take a four pin because what they do is when you key the microphone, you turn on the amplifier. On stages, all of the amps are already on, so a three pin XLR works just fine for that. So this is the older style 12 volt PA system you'll find on buses. This is the same function, newer style. Look at the difference in size. You'll see the same microphone connection, the 4-pin XLR, but you'll find wiring like this. Color-coded wires. Now, the green is the negative or the ground connection. The red is your 12 or 24 volt power supply. These work 12 to 24. The yellow and the black are your speaker leads. So either one works the same, except this you can use on the newer buses with 12 volts. But I recommend 24, uh, 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 the newer buses with 24 volts. I recommend that you use your 12 volt circuit for your amplifiers. Even though they're designed to take 24, I like to run them at the lower voltage. They're designed to perform just the same at either voltage. But I prefer using your 12 volt system for power for your amp. A 5 amp fuse is plenty big for what you're doing here. You're going to run two or four speakers. You'll find on buses have speakers strung from one end of the bus to the other. You don't need speakers up front. Think about it. The people sitting up front can hear you standing there talking or they can hear you making announcements for the driver's seat. All the speakers up front do are create feedback when you turn the mic up loud enough for everybody on the bus to hear you over the road noise and the engine noise. So forget the front speakers. One on each side toward the middle of the bus and one on each side at the back of the bus where the engine noise is. So four speakers is plenty. Four 8 ohm speakers. You can buy them anywhere. They're a dime a dozen. Will work perfectly fine with either one of these amps. Okay? So, now, getting back to the microphones, as you'll see, I have a collection of microphones here of all sizes and shapes. You can take them apart and check the elements out with a little handy gadget like this. This is a 4-pin XLR, and what I've done is I've shorted the amplifier key up and these are the microphone. The white wire on this particular one is the microphone hot and the shield is the common ground. So get some clip leads like this. Put the clip lead on. They slip through your fingers. Then open up a microphone like this. You'll see this element like this or something similar. Crystal microphones have a little different element. Connect the common wire to what looks like a common here. This is a black wire with two leads, so I'm guessing this common wire is this one. Connect your other lead to the hot of the microphone. Be careful not to short them to the metal or it won't work and you won't know why. Then plug this in. Now you hear hum and that's because the microphone is out in the open air and it's picking up hum from AC around. 
but disregard the hum and listen to, to your speaker that you've connected to this amp to see if this microphone element is any good. Talk into it, and there you are. You see, you can hear me through the speaker, which is in the other side of the room, telling me this is a good microphone element. So, you can pull it out or leave it in the mic, and I'll show you when you can leave it in the mic. If the microphone has a double pull, double throw switch, like this, you can use this whole microphone. This whole thing will work for you. If, however, your microphone has some other kind of switch that only connects the mic element or only keys the system, you can't use it. Here's an example here. You see the difference between these two? This is one single circuit, either on or off. This is two completely separate circuits. When you push the button, you'll notice, I don't know how close I can get here, you'll notice this is moving both elements of the switch. You see, these are the two contacts here. Here's one circuit here, and here's one circuit here. Now you'll notice when I move the button to push to talk, I'm moving these two elements over to make contact with these two elements, which are feeding back into the wires. The switch now has keyed the amplifier, it has applied power to the amplifier, and it has also connected the microphone element. The reason for this setup is in mobile situations, you don't want this mic live and the amp live, so you turn off the mic circuit and you kill the power to the amplifier. The reason for the second part of this switch is to short out the amplifier power, the residual power that's left in the amplifier. After you turn the power off to the amp, the capacitors in the amplifier still haven't completely discharged. So the purpose of this is to short out those capacitors so this amplifier dies instantly. Otherwise, if it fades down, you're going to hear noise from various electrical circuits in the bus. So now that we have discovered that this is a double pull, double throw switch, we could use this microphone, but we need to change the connector. So, practice up your soldering skills. Get yourself a 40 or a 60 watt pencil gun like this. Get yourself rosin core solder. Rosin core. This is a box that's 50 years old. I've had this well, I had dark curly hair when I bought this box of solder. And you'll notice it's 60, 40, 10, and lead. You need this kind of solder for this kind of work. Don't buy some cheap modern solder used for plumbing or you'll corrode all the connections and you'll be on eBay looking for microphones again. Okay, I'm going to pause with that. I want to check out this video, make sure I'm doing this right, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, back. Well, I went over this lighting situation here. I could see that it's awfully difficult to see what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do is go back to this microphone and these connections.
which you can see here, no problem with the power supply. You know, you can use the female uh, disconnects for that. And here, for the speakers, you can find the 0.187 male ends, and that will fit in that terminal. Then, you'll have to grind the other one down to fit in this narrower slot. That's right, we drop them, and then we just go get another one, or pick that one up. Okay, so we'll slide this one in, like this, and slide this one in, like this, and there you have your speaker connections. Now, I was going to spend time putting wires in here, but I think you know how to do that now. Uh, you use one of these tools for that. All of this stuff is available at a hardware store. And I was at Ace Hardware to get some of these. I found I was out of them. And while I was at it, I found some radio quality solder. So, believe it or not, we can still buy it. And as you can see, somewhere here it says 6040. So, there you are, 6040. And this is for radios and electrical work of any kind. This is for soldering electrical wires. Okay? This was the box I was showing you before. Now that I finally have enough light, you should be able to see it. And also the XLR4, which I showed you before. But the problem is, is I talk with my hands, so I wave everything around. And it makes it difficult to see. So, anyhow, that's how that goes. See, this comes apart. You slide the wire through the sleeve first, and then you solder the terminals. I have to re-aim the camera to get to that, and I don't know if we're going to do that yet today. It's getting late. I'm getting hungry and all. And what else was I going to show you? Okay, then... I was going to show you this business with this double pull, double throw switch. If you watch really carefully, you will see that one of these terminals first touches one, and then it comes back and touches the other. I'm going to see if I can't get on, get around here so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see what I'm doing. You see how this switch is moving in a way that that one blade touches two contacts. One contact this way, one contact this way. That's a double throw. The other side is single pull. It doesn't matter. See, the other side we're going to use for the microphone circuit. See, now the microphone is connected and now it's disconnected. So that's the way that works. So we tested this, or I tested this element. I don't know why I say we. I got that from ham radio and CB. We isn't. This is the microphone element. These are available. They're quite expensive, so what you can do is look up Amateur Radio Ham Fest in your neighborhood and go to those ham fests and you'll find microphones like these for five, ten bucks. I think these elements new are somewhere around seventy-five, eighty dollars. Uh, you don't need to spend that kind of money yet. There are still many of these good microphones around the country yet. Uh,
Here's the front of that microphone. It happens to be for our Johnson two-way radio. So look for microphones like this at Hamfest swap meets and uh, that. So, okay. Now what I'm going to do is put together, finish putting together a mobile page microphone. I found one of these at a swap meet for six dollars. He says, do you think that's too much to pay? And I said, no. Uh, I'm not into bargaining for stuff that's more valuable than what they're asking. So I don't do that. I don't bargain people down just for the fun of it. Here's another example of a double pull, double throw switch. The center is common and whichever way this switch slides, it'll make two contacts together. With the switches in this position, these two terminals are connected. When the switch is in that position, these two terminals are connected. This is the common. The same with this side. Same thing. This side is separate from this side. So there's two separate functions possible in this switch. Actually four if you count the terminals. So again, with the switch in this position, these two are connected. Switch in this position, these two are connected. You'll notice that there's no solder on this one because this is the microphone side. You either want it on or off. This side is the amplifier side. When it is on and the mic is on, everything's working fine. But that amplifier is designed to stop working instantly when you let go of the microphone. And that's what this position is. It shorts out the B plus circuit in the, in the amplifier causing it to drop dead instantly. Again, if it was left to drift down by itself, it would be picking up noise from all the things on a bus that generate noise. Uh, other radios, uh, control systems, fans, lights, everything makes noise on a bus. So these amplifiers are designed for that. Okay, now, an important thing to remember when you're wiring an amplifier is that this case is grounded. That means if you have an older bus with a positive ground system, you need to mount this on a board. I like a piece of four by six by two inches. I like a four by six by two inches. A piece of board, two inches, cut out of a four, cut into a four by six, and screw this with short enough screws so it doesn't go through the wood. Mount this to that board and mount the board to your bus wherever you can. Don't let this be grounded if you have a positive ground system. By the way, I don't recommend reversing polarity on buses. It's totally unnecessary. Doesn't mean anything. You don't need a bunch of family fa fancy gauges. You're not on a racetrack. You don't need all kinds of, you don't need a tachometer. You don't need all kinds of fancy gauges, but a voltmeter is a good gauge. If you have one of the buses that just says charging, not charging, get rid of it and get a voltmeter. Uh, the charging, not charging, it only takes a trickle of energy to operate that gauge. And you don't know if the batteries are really charging or not. So replace that one with a voltmeter. Leave the rest alone and don't buy a stupid tachometer and stick it up in front of your face. You don't need it. All right? So there we go. So the next exercise is going to be tomorrow when I'm going to wire this microphone to this amplifier. As you can see, everything is here and I shouldn't have any trouble at all with this setup. 
All I need to do is go to these pin terminals and identify which is which. Because with the new XLR, I'm going to wire it up like you see here. And what I'll do is I'll use the ohmmeter here to check the continuity of this after I move the remove this plug and expose the bare wires. Then I'll check the continuity so I can identify which is which here. But what it looks like here is that both microphone wires are black, but the key to the one being common is as you're looking at this one, it's upside down. This is the negative and this is the positive. This is the hot side of this microphone element and this is the negative or ground side. So you want to be sure and wire it that way. So that wire comes in through here somewhere. This wire goes through the switch and comes into the amp and then the switch turns the amp on. So by running continuity checks, comparing these wires here, the way they're located and the way these pins are located, I can find them here after I move, remove this. And then I'll write down on either this sheet or I'll make up a sheet like this so that the colors match the terminals. So we'll get to that later. It's been great having you here with me now. And I'll be back. We'll start wiring this microphone. I'll plug in my little soldering pencil. I'll probably keep using solder out of this box. And then if you don't have any solder, this is what I recommend. It's available online or at Ace Hardware. Remember, it has to be 60-40. If it doesn't say contained lead, it doesn't. And you will regret it. So be sure you get the right stuff. And fun here. Been fun here being with you. And I hope you understand this is not complicated, but it takes concentration. Send your wife off shopping with your Visa card, not hers. Make sure her gas tank is full. Put the dogs out. Send the children to school so you can pay attention to what you're doing. And we'll get into the soldering of this next time. Okay? Adios.